This video gives some tips on how to find the citation elements needed for citing information from the free web. Typically, the key citation elements for any web page include the author, the publication date, the title of the web page, the name of the website, and the publisher of the website. The publisher is the group that built and maintains the website. The citation guidelines being referenced in this video follow the MLA style. Here's a list of results from a Google search I did on the topic of privatizing government services. I'm going to start by looking at this website. Authors can be a person or a group. Typically, the author information is located near the top of the web page, right under the title, as you can see here, Andy Kim. Authors might also be listed near the end of the web page. If you don't have an author, that's okay. Your citation will start with the title of the web page. The publication date can also be found either at the top or at the bottom of the web page. Here, it's at the top. According to MLA, if you don't have a specific date like this, you can use a copyright date, which is usually located at the bottom of the web page. If you can't find any date, be sure to include an access date when you saw the information. The title will be at the top. Sometimes it's hard to tell the title. You can get clues by looking at the URL. The name of the website can also be tricky. It's often in the left-hand corner, as it is here in this case, but it can also be listed on the right-hand corner. It's usually also listed at the very bottom of the web page. To locate the publisher of the website, I recommend clicking on the About or Contact links. These are typically up at the top or at the very bottom. If the publisher is the same as the website, which is common, in MLA you'll want to leave out the publisher name. But in this case, I have a different publisher name, so I will be including that in my citation. Let's look at another one. This one is a magazine article from the magazine Harvard Business Review. Yes, it's an older article, but let's say I'm going to cite it for a historical perspective. Whenever I see something like this, I try to find it in our library databases. It's much easier to cite sources from our databases because they clearly identify the citation elements, including page numbers, which helps with MLA in-text citations. So I'm going to cut and paste the web page title into OneSearch, which is on our library's homepage. And sure enough, there it is. So I'm going to be citing this one as an article from a database. Let me go back to pick this one. We have the author, again, at the top, typically underneath the title. And then here's the publication date. Here's the title of the web page. You can always get clues from looking at the URL. In the upper left-hand corner is the name of my website. If I go to About, I learn that the website name Reason Foundation is the exact same name as the publisher Reason Foundation. So I'll be leaving out the name of the publisher. And I'll pick the next one. Here, my author is on the left hand side. And here's the web page title. Here's the name of the website. But you notice I don't have a date, so I'm going to scroll down to look for a publication date because sometimes it's at the very end of the page and I don't see anything here. In that case, according to MLA, I can use the copyright date. Let's look at one more. This oftentimes happens. When you find a journal article, notice that it's asking me for money to read it. So whenever I come across a journal article like this, I always check to see if we have it for free in our library databases. So I'm going to copy the title and go back to my OneSearch to see do we have it in any of our databases. And ta-da, there it is. So I'll be citing this one as an article from a database. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.